Thank you for joining me. And, you know, it's interesting because this is the first semester ever where students actually know what Zoom is and have used it. In previous semesters, I've always, I've used Zoom for a long, long time and students never had used it before. They were a little bit nervous getting on for the first time. And this is now a very different time frame and, you know, use of the technology. So it is interesting to see. So I don't have to show anybody how to use Zoom or what, tell anybody what it is. Uh, but I will say that I, I, we'll have one zoom session for every single unit and i want to share that being here helps because if it's just me and if nobody shows up i'll still have the zoom session by myself so that i can record it and you guys can take notes but if you're able to be here please do because you'll have questions you'll have an opportunity to interact with your peers some that cannot be replicated by just watching the video. So the more people who are here, the better it is for everyone involved, even those watching the video. If you're here, all you have to do is for the assignment is go to the assignment and note the date that you were here. And I, I'm very able to easily see who's here. If you're not here and you can't make it for whatever reason, um, you need to watch the video and you need to complete the summary. And I don't want to quote the number of words because I have it written down in the handout and I've changed it over time. And I don't want to have anything different than what I have written down. So go ahead and write the summary and turn that in. And you have until the end of the unit to do it. If you're here with me today, you should just right after this meeting go and turn it in just so that you don't forget. And that being said, there's a few of you who are active, but you didn't turn in some of your orientation items. I sent an, an email. Please go back and double check to see that you did those. And if, if you didn't submit them properly, please go back and submit them. I don't need you to worry. I don't need you to email me back. I just want to let you know. So, okay, um, I am here on the roadmap and the roadmap is always going to have the writing project prompt always so you're going to have the writing project prompt unless it's a timed right at the very beginning of the unit and we have our writing project here and i always begin with key questions and the key questions it's just the prompt written in a shorter way that's just a question and sometimes um hearing it asked as a question helps and I also am going to read the prompt aloud because a lot of times that helps too. And I want to share with you that as someone who has been a student much longer than I ever have been a teacher, I started teaching at the age of 23. I'm in my 28th year right now. I just turned 50. This is what 50 looks like. Hi. Uh, and I just want to share that. Um, when I read an essay prompt or a writing project prompt, whether it's timed or otherwise, I always start out with a little bit of nervousness and go, I don't know if I'm going to be able to write on this. And I feel a little bit wary of it. And I don't think that that feeling ever really goes away. It's natural and normal to read through a prompt and maybe not completely get it at first or to not know how you're going to tackle it. I also want to share with you that after you've read it and you've taken some time to think about it, sometimes when you go back, you'll have a, a bigger idea of what you want to do, but you're not sure about the details and the actual pre-writing and then the actual writing itself will help guide you through what to think about or add next because writing is the act of learning. I, I, I say that that's kind of one of my mantras that writing is the act of learning. It's also an act of healing. It's an act of, of it does so many things to help your mental state, help your emotional state, even if it's just writing down a list. I use my phone all the time to write down lists of things. So I just wanted to share that with you. Um, so let me read the prompt aloud. 
And then what's gonna happen is if you have any initial questions, I'll answer those. Then I'm gonna go in, put you guys into some breakout rooms so you can talk about the prompt for a few minutes. And then we're gonna come back and I'll answer more questions if you have them. And then I wanna briefly talk about my grading scheme. Uh, it's a little different than what a lot of other teachers do. So I want you to be able to understand what it is. All right, so the key question is, what is an unethical law stated or implied, meaning that it might actually be a law or it might be something that's implied, like an implied rule, like this is sort of a rule that you do. And one way to think about an implied rule would be um, dinner time at your house. And there are certain rules to what happens at dinner time, like maybe you're not allowed to have your phone out. Maybe you put your napkin on your lap. Maybe you don't sit and begin eating until you've prayed or till everybody's been served. Or, you know, there's certain rules that you follow in your household. And if you've ever gone to somebody else's house to have dinner, especially as a child, one of the things you notice is how they do things a little bit differently at their house. Some things the same, some things different. So this is, you know, so, but it's not, those aren't laws. Those are just sort of implied rules. So we're not talking about implied rules like what you do at the dinner table, but kind of greater implied rules um, that may affect more people. So you're looking at what is an unethical law stated or implied or current. So something that happened in a period of time that needs to be changed or responded to. And boy, do we live at a time when there's so many occurrences that we could say need to be changed or responded to. So we're really like, you can choose something in history, but right now we have so many things that we could write about if we wanted to. I do want to say there are two topics that are off the table for this particular writing prompt for my class. One is abortion. The other is gay marriage. And I've, so many people have written these papers, they're hacking, you can find them very easily on the web. Um, I just, those two topics are off the table. No, no abortion, please, and no, no gay marriage. We're, those are legal, we're moving on, and we're going to talk about something else. So those are the key questions. So that's the prompt written in question form, but let's look at the prompt itself. Choose an unethical law, stated or implied, or occurrence and argue why it's unethical in a multi-paragraph essay using the ideas within ethical argument. This is critical. I have students writing really wonderful papers, but they do not mention the book Ethical Argument at all, and they do not include anything from it, and that is automatically going to lower your grade, probably to a C or a D because this is critical. We're reading ethical argument, we're talking about ethics, and so you really need to include that in your paper. So you have to use the ideas and ethical argument, including the procedure of verification and or justification, and fallacy. And fallacies are things, you know, you're gonna get to that part, if you haven't already, where people try and convince you of their point of view using flawed logic. So fallacy, involves flawed logic. And so you're going to use the procedure of verification and or it's also called procedure of justification. And you are going to also mention the fallacy. So if, if there's an, an eth unethical law, the reason there is an unethical law is because of some sort of flawed occurrence, okay? A flawed or flawed, flawed ideas, flawed uh, issues. So for the purposes for, of our class, your paper is going to be, worth, is going to be 1,500 words. If you use Google Docs or, or Word, they both keep track of the numbers of words. Uh, it's usually between 250 words to 300 words per page. If it's double space, 12 point font, one inch margin, et cetera, but just 1,500 words. It's worth 20% of the grade. Um, you need to use uh, Kurtler's ethical argument. You need to use the procedure of verification or justification and respond to fallacies. I do have, you do need to use outside sources about your topic, 
both from the library and the internet. The, you, um, and I want to be really clear here, you need to for sure use an outside source from the library. You may choose to use sources from the internet. Internet tends to have newer sources, but you might be surprised, so look up your topic. And I have an optional, very helpful library voice thread that I use in English 1A. This, you don't have to respond to the voice thread, but it kind of guides you through uh, how to use the library. It's a very long voice thread, so you can, you know, break it up, but it's very useful. Um, I want you to use at least one visual source that you incorporate into your paper. And you wanna choose one that makes your paper more convincing. And I'm asking you to label it as a figure. And I actually have this handout here called Incorporating Visuals, which actually shows you all different types of visuals you can consider uh, because there's several different types, how to include them and how to cite them using MLA. Um, I want you to anticipate counter arguments like people who might disagree with you. So politically, you might agree with um, the left, you might agree with the right, you might be more moderate, um, and either all sides have counter arguments to whatever argument somebody puts forward. I have another mini, little mini lecture thinking about counter argument. Uh, you must follow MLA. I have an MLA mini lecture if you need it, and also a link to Purdue OWL, which is always a good place to look up issues considering MLA. I want you to write in the third person for this genre or type of essay. Please avoid using personal pronouns, I, me, you, etc. Please do not use those in this type of essay. And then you're going to use, work on your self-assessment revision reflection journal for writing project number one. Uh, before, during, and after composing, there's questions to ask yourself. So you've written a draft and then there's a prompt and then you do the peer review and then there's a prompt and then you turn it in and there's a prompt and then you receive your grade and there's another prompt. So, and you, this is gonna be ongoing. So this actual journal where there's very specific instructions about how to complete it. And I also have a video which explains it as well. Um, it is something that's gonna be ongoing. So you'll have, start a Google doc and you'll do it for the first writing project and then you'll come back and do it for the second and so on and so forth. And the final, the four entries you should be writing along the way after you write your first, you know, you have your pre-writing and your first draft, then you're gonna write your first entry. And you'll turn though this whole thing in two days after the final draft and it is mandatory. So if you want, you know, I will go back, even if I've graded your essay, I will go back and take the grade off of the essay if this is not turned in because again, this sort of reflection about your own writing process is so important. It is not secondary. So I want to make sure that you're doing that. And for every writing project prompt, I have the problem, the audience, and the purpose included because these are the things that you need to think about when you are doing your writing, any type of writing. What's the problem? What's the, who's the audience? Who are you trying to convince? And even though I'm gonna be the one reading the paper, I'm reading it as this audience. And then there's a purpose to writing. You don't just write just because, okay? So this is the prompt. Does anyone have any questions right now before I put you into breakout rooms where you talk about the prompt and what your thoughts about it are? Um, when when we, speak, oh. oh, we'll let, we'll let the gentleman go first. Go ahead. Um, when we are um, using the ethical arguments, will that mean like directly quoting it or directly referencing it or just using the ideas within the book? Thank you very much. You should directly reference it. And if usually there's a quotation or two that probably would be really good to include 
and you should start early. So that reference to ethical argument should start probably in your introduction. If not your introduction, like the next paragraph. Yeah, good question. All right, Randa. Uh, about the voice threat, uh, because we have an assignment for today due today also about, uh, about the voice threat. So I, I don't know what we're doing with that. Okay, we'll talk about the voice thread after this because I want to stay on this particular topic, um, but we'll talk about that when we get back. Okay. All right, any other questions about this particular assignment right here? Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to stop sharing right here, and I am going to do breakout rooms. And I'm going to give you three to four minutes to talk about the prompt. And each person should take a, a turn, you know, a minute or so to talk about this is what I'm thinking about doing. I'm not sure about this. Do you understand this? And then I will bring you back in about three to probably four to five minutes. Okay, so the breakout rooms are now open.
All right, everybody. So does anyone have any questions about the actual writing project prompt? We were wondering about like, since you told us about two things we're not allowed to talk about, if there is a list of things of law, because it has to start with a law and then it became unethical. So is there a list we can go through? No, because there's so, there's so many, Randa, it, and it doesn't have to be a law. It can be an occurrence, so something that happened in history. So it could be really almost anything that, that is unethical. So it could be an unethical law, an unethical occurrence, uh, the law can be stated or implied. It can be so many different things, so many different things. And I, I, I can give you an example of one if you want, you know, so, and I'm not saying it's unethical, but some people might argue that it is. Uh, is it unethical to require people to wear masks? Is it unethical to require people to social distance? Is it unethical to go into, uh, and I'm going to, change it is it unethical to go into a store without a mask and just say i can't wear one and then just go in there anyway is it unethical you know there's all sorts of unethical things that you can look at so i don't want to limit you i'm just letting you know those are two topics that are off the table all right any other questions uh yes i have a quick question um, I've been doing all the other work that's been like given every week and I honestly haven't started on, on thinking of a topic. Is it okay if I email you afterwards, like before we actually start the writing project, uh, to make sure that the topic is clear? Yeah, absolutely. That is more than fine. Yes. Yes. Okay. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Absolutely. And you, I'm not expecting you to have a topic, even though I give you the prompt ahead of time, you may not have a prop a uh, topic until it comes time to actually start writing or maybe you do have a topic right away so everybody's a little different so don't don't feel stressed that you don't have a topic all right so um i want to answer randa's question really quickly first and then um i want to talk about the grading in the class just really briefly and then i will share with you and then we will end so I'm going to share the screen. And Randa, you were talking about the voice thread. The voice thread, you are just to begin doing the voice thread today. You don't have to complete it. The reading film handout for the film, The Imitation Game, yes, that's due by tonight. Um, but the voice thread is not. So I'm open on our voice thread here. And so there are slides that are going to explain what it is you need to do. And I'm asking you to please post on two or three slides and then go back and listen to your peers and have a conversation with them. So for example, here we have, there are several ethical issues in the film. What do you think the most important is and why? And so we already have some responses here. So what, you know, you've just started, so you just need to begin your comments here. But you don't want to begin your comments until you've seen the film. Does that make sense? Yeah, can you go back to the page before this so I can take a picture? Yes. Thanks. Yeah, but this is, it, this is absolutely in the voice thread itself. So you just link into this. Mm -hmm. But you need to make sure you're signed in to VoiceThread. So you're going to sign in to VoiceThread in a different tab and then go to Canvas and link into this VoiceThread to respond. And you can always go to somebody else's comment. Here's one from Jolene. I'm going to start it and then I'm going to pause it. I'm going to hit this arrow is the so I can respond directly to Jolene if I want to as well. I can respond directly to her or I can start responding here, either which one. And you notice that the circle lets us know that that is a, um, a thread through there. So you can choose to do that as well. Okay. 
Okay. I remember signing in, but can I double check if I uh, have to sign in again or some, or it will show me? Say that again, Miranda. I did sign in. I remember signing in, but I didn't use it. So I have to go back. Is it, is it an easy process? Like oh, yeah. yeah, you don't have to sign up again. You just sign in with your email and your password. I have to sign in every time I go to VoiceThread too, or mo not most times. Okay. So it's not a big deal. To, it's just like signing into anything. You just sign in in one tab and then you go back to the voice thread and you respond. Mm -hmm. All right. I am going to stop sharing here and I wanted to talk to you briefly about the grade, how I do the grading, and then we'll be done. So uh, how I do the grading is this. It's very similar to a grade point average. So all of you had a grade point average when you graduated high school. And you even have a grade point average in college, right? A 4.0 is, you know, you have all A's, 3.0 is all B's, 2.0 is C's, well, you know, and most people don't have an exact, you know, 0. 0.0. Usually it's like 3.8 or it's, you know, 2.9 or whatever it is. And so the way grading happens in my class is that a zero is an F, uh, zero to 20%. 20 to 39% is a D. 40 to 59% is a C, okay? So it's very, normally 59% and lower is a fail, but in our class, we're using the grade point scale. So yes, a four is an A, and if you don't get a four and you get a three, that's a B. But a two is a C, a two is not, which is 50%, it's not an F, if that makes sense. And then a 60 to 79% uh, is a B, and an 80 to 100% is an A. So I wanted to make that very clear with you. It is an equitable grading practice. And like I said, it mimics the grade point scale. So that's the best way to think about it. So I just wanted to share that with you so that you understand. Uh, I have been lax for the first few weeks about accepting certain things late while you're getting used to turning things in in on Canvas. Beginning next week, I'm going to be less lax. So meaning you either have it in on time or you have a zero and the zero sticks. I do drop the lowest six grades from preparatory work, which is the work you're, you know, you're doing right now. You haven't done your writing projects. Your writing projects, there are two late passes that you have. Each late pass is worth four points. And if you use your late pass, you lose a four points and then you, you, know, you have a total of two. And then what happens is um, if you don't use your late passes, you actually keep them. They end up being extra credit points as well. So at the end of the semester, because of these and other extra credit opportunities that come along from time to time, um, the, whatever grade you have stands. There's, you know, no bumping up. Okay. All right. So that's that. And I'm glad to have seen you all. Um, there was a question about um, whether I can do these later on in the day. I cannot do evening. I'm not available in the evening, but I could maybe try to do one later in the afternoon. It will always be on Fridays. The reason it's on Fridays is because some teachers are doing synchronous classes where you have to attend, and I do not want to interrupt any of those. And you are most welcome, and thank you for your documentary suggestion, Paulina. All right. Take care, everybody. I hope you have a good day, and please, if you can, stay inside so that you can protect your lungs the best that you can. Best of luck, everybody. Can I stay with you one second so I can make sure like how to the assignments that they didn't go through? Yes. Thank Take care, you. everybody.
Bye. All right, yes, thank stay you. Safe. Stay bye. safe. You are most welcome. Okay, bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Professor. You thank are you so welcome. Much. Thank you.